The arrival of a mysterious white balloon over the United States last week sparked a major security incident as authorities struggled to identify its origins. A few days later, the Pentagon labelled the strange balloon an intelligence-gathering airship, in other words, a spy balloon. So where did the balloon originate? It's been revealed that it came from China, and it isn't the first. During the Trump administration, several were logged entering U.S. airspace, some initially labelled as UFOs. It appears that China is using high-altitude, 200-foot-tall balloons as aerial surveillance platforms to spy on the U.S., using high-altitude winds to carry the vehicles across the North Pacific to the North American continent. But this new phenomenon is actually very far from a new idea. The Chinese have evidently dusted off and updated a World War II-era weapon and repurposed it for the 21st century. But unlike today, in World War II, the U.S. authorities had no compunction in destroying these weapons the moment they appeared over U.S. airspace. For though the balloon may appear a harmless, even a rather silly weapon, then as now, such vehicles can be used to spread death and destruction cheaply and often undetectably. This is the story of the first balloon campaign against the U.S., the Japanese Fugo campaign of World War II. How to bring the war to the mainland United States was something the Japanese gave considerable thought to. Shore bombardment was tried using surface submarines off California. The effects were negligible. Tiny submarine-launched spotter planes dropped incendiary bombs on the forests of the Pacific Northwest, but again with little effect for a lot of effort. Transporting one very small aircraft across the Pacific aboard a very valuable submarine to drop a tiny amount of bombs onto no specific target. At best, it would have proved a propaganda coup had the US authorities realised that Japan had successfully attacked the mainland, but no such media coverage was generated. Another munitions delivery system was required, and this time the Japanese decided upon an unmanned and ultra cheap option the paper balloon. Paper has long been used for many structures in Japan. It proved to be cheap and durable material for making a weapon. Once again, the Japanese required the initial utilization of their submarine force to attack the US, and in 1943, 200 balloons were prepared to be launched from two modified subs, the I-34 and I-35. Each balloon had a 20-foot envelope and a range of more than 600 miles. Although the operation was fully prepared by August 1943, the Imperial Japanese Navy realized that employing submarines on such missions would not have been a suitable use of their potential, especially as the war had long since begun to deteriorate for Japan. The project was shelved, but the Imperial Japanese Army continued development instead. The army lacked the means to launch balloons from a midpoint between Japan and the US, so the new weapons had to be designed to depart from the Japanese home islands. The army balloon bomb project was codenamed Fugo, or Windship Weapon. The army designers of the 9th Military Technical Research Institute under Major General Suyoshi Kosaba, in cooperation with scientists of the Central Meteorological Observatory in Tokyo, produced a balloon design designated the Type A. The balloon was made of 64 laminated mulberry paper tree gauze, these sections forming the curved surface of the balloon. This was glued together with a form of potato paste, forming a balloon envelope with a 100-foot circumference. The envelope was then filled with 19,000 cubic feet of hydrogen to provide the necessary high ceiling the weapon required. Below the envelope was suspended a woven dural ring with bombs and 36 ballast sandbags attached, controlled by three aneroid barometers and a small battery mounted on a platform above, which controlled a circuit to maintain altitude and release the bombs. The balloon's gondola could be loaded with high-explosive anti-personnel or incendiary bombs. Japan called the new weapon Fuzen Bakodan, or fire bombs. Launch sites were located on the east coast of the island of Honshu. Once released, the balloons were uncontrollable and reached North America at the behest of the wind currents, cruising in the jet stream at between 20 and 40,000 feet. To maintain altitude, ballast bags of sand were automatically released if the balloon began to sink. 
In the daytime, the balloon would cruise at maximum altitude, but at night the envelope would collect dew and would sink as it became heavier. The altimeter would cause a set of blow plugs to fire, releasing some ballast and restoring altitude. When all the sand was jettisoned, the bombs would become the final ballast, they being released automatically, an event timed to occur somewhere over North America. Finally, a picric acid block would explode, destroying the balloon gondola, with a fuse being lit that was connected to a charge on the balloon itself. The resultant mixture of hydrogen, air and explosives would cause the balloon envelope to burn up as a large orange fireball. The first balloon launched on the 3rd of November 1944, with a United States Navy patrol boat discovering a balloon floating in the sea 67 miles off San Pedro, California on the 5th of November. The first known successful attack on the U.S. occurred on the 6th of December 1944, bombs being dropped around 12 miles southwest of Owl Creek Mountain, close to Thermopolis in Wyoming. Fragments of balloon envelopes and gondolas were discovered in Alaska and Montana, and forensic tests confirmed the wreckage to be of Japanese origin. The American people were not told of the attacks, and the media was ordered not to report this alarming development. The U.S. was also developing countermeasures to deal with this unique threat, codenamed Operation Firefly. The U.S. 4th Air Force gathered fighter aircraft to shoot down the balloons before they could release their payloads, and many were downed over the Aleutian Islands before they could reach their targets as they sank to lower altitudes. One was shot down over Oregon. There were fears among the United States authorities that the Japanese might launch balloons fitted with chemical or biological weapons to land on U.S. soil. And to counter this threat, stocks of decontamination chemicals were quietly distributed to the western states, and farmers asked to report any strange crop markings or animal infections that occurred. Although the authorities played down the potential damage the balloon bombs could wreak, a U.S. Army unit, the 555th Parachute Infantry Battalion, nicknamed the Triple Nickel, was trained to act as fire jumpers should the incendiary bombs set the forests ablaze. Of 9,300 balloon bombs launched from Japan, only 212 were confirmed as having reached the United States and Mexico, landing as far east in the U.S. as Michigan and a further 73 were confirmed as coming down in Canada. The only fatalities caused by balloon bombs occurred on the 5th of May 1945 on Gearhart Mountain near Bly, Oregon. A picnic party of one adult and five children were killed instantly when they dragged an unexploded Japanese Navy 15kg anti-personnel bomb out of the woods. The only known fatalities caused by enemy action on the mainland US during the war. It is not known if any of the balloons started forest fires. In April 1945, the Japanese ceased their balloon launches, largely because the US media blackout gave them no information whatsoever about the success or failure of their campaign. What remains certain, however, is the fact that many of the bombs remained unaccounted for, and after nearly 80 years of deterioration, could pose a serious risk to anybody who discovered one of these lethal relics in the US countryside today. The balloon bombs were certainly spread widely over the North American continent. For example, one struck a power line in Washington state, cutting off electricity to the Hanford Engineer Works, where the U.S. was manufacturing plutonium for the top-secret Manhattan atomic bomb project. 45 bombs landed in Oregon, 37 in Alaska, 28 in Washington state, and 25 in California. Seven landed in Nebraska, including Omaha. Another landed 10 miles from Detroit, and another near Grand Rapids. The bombs have continued to turn up long after the end of World War II. In November 1953, a Japanese bomb was discovered by the Canadian Army at Edmonton, Alberta, while the U.S. Air Force found another in Alaska in 1955. In southwest Oregon in 1978, yet another Japanese bomb was found and destroyed. In Canada in 2014, the remains of a balloon gondola, including still live ordnance, was discovered near the town of Lumbee. A live bomb, dramatically embedded in the earth, was deemed too dangerous to move and was blown up on site by bomb disposal experts. 
we can be sure this is not the last we will hear of Japanese balloon bombs or I suspect of the modern Chinese equivalent, now sailing serenely across US airspace in 2023. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.